I'm fitting a Yanmar 2YM 15 horse diesel engine into my 24 foot Ranger class gaff sloop. And in this episode, I'll show you how I lifted it in. Before I lifted it in, I had to remove the cross beams that I had out to the walls holding the boat upright. But before I could remove them, I had to prop up the boat from underneath. But before I could do that, I had to cork, pay and paint patches on the hull where the props would go, because it would be difficult to get at those areas again. I even painted a couple of coats of anti-fouling paint on the patches. I'll do a whole episode on corking and paying the seams when I do the rest of the hull. A good mate of mine welded the adjustable props onto the cradle that I'd kept from when I was building boats commercially and I wound them up quite tight on the hull with plywood pads on the metal flanges. Then I removed the cross beams, monitoring the centre line with a laser level to check that it wasn't moving. It wasn't, it didn't move a millimetre. I'd previously lifted the engine off my ute and into the shed with chain blocks attached to several steel I-beams I'd built into the shed when I built it years ago. I lifted it straight up at the stern of the boat. It weighs about 120 kilos, about 250 pounds. I rigged another chain block exactly over the engine beds. Now this is using the 6Ps principle. Prior planning prevents piss poor performance. Well, actually, I have a confession to make. I knew the beam would be close to where the engine would need to be when I set the boat up, but I fluked it being exactly over the right spot. Attaching both chain falls to the engine meant that I could move it in stages along the boat by lifting and lowering each fall alternately. This is a bit laborious and would have been easier with two people, but I was still able to complete the whole process in under an hour. When it was right over the spot, I disconnected the first chain block and then lowered it straight down onto the engine beds. I'm not going to fasten it down at this point, but I needed it in the boat so I can measure up and fit a whole bunch of other items, from measuring the drive shaft to building a battery box, locating the engine water intake seacock and the water filter, and fitting the cockpit drains and seacocks, as well as making sure there was room for the exhaust hose and box, the shaft and the cockpit drain hoses. I can also measure up for all fuel and water hoses, electric cables and engine control cables. I made up an MDF template for the fuel tank to make sure it fitted. It's always best to make sure your tank can be removed at a later stage without surgery to the boat. This tank is about 40 litres, about 10 gallons, which is all I'll need. This boat is not going long distance cruising. I was able to build the engine box, which will be able to be dismantled at any time. The doors on the front will be easily removable, and it's important also to make sure the water intake seacock is easily accessible. The next job is to build the back end of the cabin, or the front end of the cockpit, whichever way you want to look at it. Thanks for watching. 
And don't forget to keep an eye out for my wooden boat building, the Sydney Wooden Boat School Manuals book, available on the web at www.sydneywoodenboatschool.com.au.